want, uh, you like O1 preview, but you want it to be smarter and faster and be multimodal and be better at instruction following, a bunch of other things. So we put a lot of work into this, and for scientists, engineers, coders, we think they will really love this new model. Uh, I'd like to show you quickly uh, about how it performs. So you can see uh, the jump from GPT-40 to O1 preview across math, competition coding, GPQA, Diamond, um, and you can see that O1 is a pretty big step forward. Um, it's also much better in a lot of other ways, but raw intelligence is something that, uh, in just a minute, uh, these guys will demo some things about O1. They'll show you how it does at speed, how it does at really hard problems, how it does with multimodality. But first, I wanna talk just for a minute about the second thing we're launching today. A lot of people, uh, power users of ChatGPT at this point, they really use it a lot, and they want more compute than $20 a month can buy. So we're launching a new tier, ChatGPT Pro. And Pro has unlimited access to our models uh, and also things like advanced voice mode. It also has a, uh, a new thing called O1 Pro mode. So O1 is the smartest model in the world now, except for O1 being used in Pro mode. And for the hardest problems that people have, uh, O1 Pro mode lets you do even a little bit better. Um, so you can see a competition map, you can see a GPQA diamond, um, and these boosts may look small, but in, in complex workflows where you're really pushing the limits of these models, it's pretty significant. Uh, I'll show you one more thing about, pro, pro, about the pro mode. So one thing that people really have said they want is reliability. And here you can see how the reliability of an answer from pro mode compares to O1, and this is an even stronger delta. And again, for our pro users, we've heard a lot about how much people want this. ChatGPT Pro is $200 a month, uh, launches today. Over the course of this, these 12 days, we have some other things to add to it that we think you'll also really love, um, but unlimited model use and uh, this new O1 Pro mode. So I wanna jump right in and we'll show some of those demos that we talked about. Uh, and these are some of the guys that helped build O1 uh, with many other people behind them on the team. Thanks, Sam. Hi, um, I'm Hyung Won. I'm Jason. And I'm Max. We're all research scientists who worked on building O1. O1 is really distinctive because it's the first model we've trained that thinks before it responds, meaning it gives much better and often more detailed and more correct responses than other models you might have tried. O1 is being rolled out today to all uh, Plus and soon to be Pro subscribers on ChatGPT, replacing O1 Preview. O1 model is uh, faster and smarter than the O1 Preview model, which we launched in September. After the launch, many people asked about the multimodal input, so we added that. Uh, so now the O1 model live today is able to reason through both uh, images and text jointly. As Sam mentioned, today we're also going to launch a new tier of ChatGPT called ChatGPT Pro. ChatGPT Pro offers unlimited access to our best models like O1, 40, and Advanced Voice. ChatGPT Pro also has a special way of using O1 called O1 Pro Mode. With O1 Pro Mode, you can ask the model to use even more compute to think even harder on some of the most difficult problems. We think the audience for ChatGPT Pro will be the power users of ChatGPT, those who are already pushing the models to the limits of their capabilities on tasks like math, programming, and writing. It's been amazing to see how much people are pushing a one preview, uh, how much people who do technical work all day get out of this, and uh, we're really excited to let them push it further. Yeah, sure. We also really think that O1 will be much better for everyday use cases, not necessarily just really hard math and programming problems. In particular, one piece of feedback we received about O1 Preview constantly was that it was way too slow. It would think for 10 seconds if you said hi to it, and we fixed that. That was really annoying. It, it was kind of funny, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> it, it really thought, it cared. Really thought hard about saying it, hi it back cared. to you. Yeah. Um, and so we fixed that. O1 will now think much more intelligently. If you ask it a simple question, it'll respond really quickly. And if you ask it a really hard question, it'll think for a really long time. Uh, we ran a pretty detailed suite of human evaluations for this model. And what we found was that it made major mistakes about 34% less often than O1 Preview, while thinking fully about 50% faster. And we think this will be a really, really noticeable difference for all of you. So I really enjoy just talking to these models. I'm a big history buff, and I'll show you a really quick demo of, for example, a sort of question that I might ask one of these models. So uh, right here, I, on the left, I have O1. On the right, I have O1 Preview. And I'm just asking it a really simple history question. List the Roman emperors of the second century. Tell me about their dates, what they did. Um, not hard, but you know, GPT-40 actually gets this wrong a reasonable fraction of the time. Um, and so I've asked O1 this, I've asked O1 preview this. I tested this offline a few times, and I found that O1 on average responded about 60% faster than O1 preview. 
Um, this could be a little bit variable because right now we're in the process of swapping all our GPUs from O1 uh, pro preview to O1. So actually, O1 thought for about 14 seconds. O1 preview still going. There's a lot of Roman emperors. There's a lot of Roman emperors. Yeah, 4 actually gets this wrong a lot of the time. There are a lot of folks who ruled for like uh, six days, 12 days, a month, and it sometimes forgets those. Can you do them all from memory, including the six day people? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, so here we go. O1 thought for about 14 seconds. O1 preview thought for about 33 seconds. These should both be faster once we finish deploying, but These, we want this to go live right now. I exactly. Um, so yeah, we, we think you'll really enjoy talking to this model. We, we found that it gave great responses. It thought much faster. It should just be a much better user experience for everyone. So one other feature we know that people really wanted for everyday use cases that we've had requested a lot is multimodal inputs and image understanding. And hyung -won is going to talk about that now. Yep. To illustrate the multimodal input and reasoning, uh, I created this toy problem uh, with some hand-drawn diagrams and so on. So here it is. It's hard to see, so I already took a photo of this. And so let's look at this photo in a laptop. So once you upload the image into the ChatGPT, you can click on it and um, to see the zoomed-in version. So this is a system of a data center in space. So maybe. Um, in the future, we might want to train AI models in the space. Uh, I think we should do that, but the uh, power number looks a little low. <laughs> One gigawatt. One gigawatt. Yeah. Okay. But the general idea, I think. Rookie numbers in this Yeah, system. rookie numbers. <laughs> rookie numbers. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we have a sun right here uh, taking in power on this solar panel. <clears throat> and then uh, there's a small data center here. It's exactly what they look like. Yeah. <laughs> yep. GPU Rex. Oh. And then pump, nice pump here. and. One interesting thing about um, operation in space is that on Earth, we can do air cooling, water cooling to cool down the GPUs. But in space, there's nothing there. So we have to radiate this um, heat into the deep space. And that's why we need this uh, giant radiator cooling panel. And this problem is about finding the lower bound estimate of the cooling panel area required to operate um, this one gigawatt uh, uh, data center. Probably going to be very big. Yep. Let's see how big it is. Oh, let's see. So that's the problem. I'm going to this prompt, and uh, yeah, this is essentially asking for that. So let me uh, hit go, and the model will think for seconds. By the way, most people don't know. I've been working with Hengwon for a long time. Hengwon actually has a PhD in thermodynamics, which is totally unrelated to AI, and you always joke that you haven't been able to use your PhD work in your job until today. So you can, you can trust Hyung Wan on this analysis. Finally, finally. <laughs> uh, thanks for hyping up. Now I really have to get this right. Uh, OK, so the model finished thinking. Only 10 seconds. It's a simple problem. So let's see if, uh, how the model did it. So power input. Um, so first of all, this one gigawatt, that was only drawn in the paper. So the model was able to pick that up nicely and then um, radiative heat transfer only. That's the thing I mentioned. So in space, nothing else. And then some simplifying um, uh, choices. And one critical thing is that I intentionally made this problem underspecified, meaning that um, the critical parameter is a temperature of the cooling panel. Uh, I left it out so that uh, we can test out the model's ability to handle um, ambiguity and so on. So the model was able to recognize that this is actually a uh, unspecified but important parameter. And it actually picked the right um, range of uh, temperature, which is about the room temperature. And with that, it continues to the analysis and does a whole bunch of things and then found out the area, which is 2.42 million square meters. Just to get a sense of how big this is, this is about 2% of the uh, land area of San Francisco. This is huge. Not that bad. Not that bad, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess this is, a, this is a reasonable. I'll skip through the rest of the details, but I think the model did a great job um, making nice, consistent assumptions that um, you know, make the required area as little as possible. And so, um, yeah, so this is the demonstration of the multimodal reasoning. And this is a simple problem, but O1 is actually very strong, and on standard benchmarks like MMMU and MathVista, O1 actually has the state-of-the-art performance. 
Now, Jason will showcase the, the pro mode. Great, so I wanna give a short demo of uh, ChatGPT 01 Pro Mode. Um, people will find uh, 01 Pro Mode the most useful for say hard math, science, or programming problems. So here I have a pretty challenging chemistry problem that uh, 01 Preview gets usually incorrect and so I will uh, let the model start thinking. Um, one thing we've learned with these models is that uh, for these very challenging problems, the model can think for up to a few minutes, I think. For this problem, the model usually thinks anywhere from one minute to up to three minutes. Um, and so we have to provide some entertainment for, for people while the model is thinking. So I'll describe the problem a little bit, and then if the model is still thinking when I'm done, I prepared a dad joke <laughs> for, for us uh, to fill right. the rest of the time. Um, so I hope it see, thinks for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you can see, uh, the problem asks for a protein that fits a very specific set of criteria. So uh, there are six criteria, and the challenge is each of them asks for pretty chemistry domain-specific knowledge that the model would have to recall. And the other thing to know about this problem uh, is that none of these criteria actually give away what the correct answer is. So for any given criteria, there could be uh, dozens of proteins that might fit that criteria. And so the model has to think through all the candidates and then check if they fit all the criteria. Okay, so you could see the model actually was faster this time. Uh, so it finished in 53 seconds. You can click and see some of the thought process that the model went through to get the answer. Uh, you could see it's uh, thinking about uh, different candidates like neural ligand initially. Um, and then it arrives at the correct answer, which is uh, retinochisin, uh, which is great. Um, okay, so to summarize, um, we saw from Max that O1 is smarter and faster than uh, O1 preview. We saw from Hyungwon that O1 can now reason over both text and images. And then finally, we saw with ChatGPT Pro Mode, uh, you can use O1 to think about, uh, the, the, to, 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 to reason about the hardest uh, science and math problems. There's more to come um, for the ChatGPT Pro tier. Uh, we're working on even more compute intensive tasks to uh, power longer and bigger tasks for those who want to push the model even further. And we're still working on adding tools to the O1 um, model, such as web browsing, file uploads, and things like that. We're also hard at work to bring O1 to the, to the API. We're going to be adding some new features for developers, structured outputs, function calling, developer messages, and uh, API image understanding, which we think you'll really enjoy. We expect this to be a great model for developers and really unlock a whole new frontier of agentic things you guys can build. We hope you love it as much as we do. That was great. Thank you guys so much. Congratulations uh, to you and the team on, on getting this done. Uh, we, we really hope that you'll enjoy O1 and Pro Mode uh, or Pro Tier. Uh, we have a lot more stuff to come. Tomorrow we'll be back with something great for developers, uh, and we'll keep going from there. Before we wrap up, can, can we hear your joke? Yes. Uh, so um, I made this joke this morning. <laughs> the, uh, the joke is this. So Santa was trying to get his large language model to do a math problem, and he was prompting it really hard, but it wasn't working. How did he eventually fix it? No idea. He used reindeer enforcement learning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>